Y'all knew it was coming, right? Been talking about it for a while, right? It's not quite long enough for a bun at all. So I could put one in here and then put one in in the back to keep it from floppy. I want to grow the top long. I keep saying that and then I keep getting fed up. And this morning was the peak of fed up. The absolute peak. <sighs> Started with stepping on a wet towel on the floor in the bathroom. That's always grumpy making. Yeah, that won't take. Anyway, I cut it. I don't know what the back looks like yet because I did it blind. So the husband will have to fix it later and y'all are going to see it before I do. Well, you won't because... I will record this and then I will watch this to make sure there's nothing unflattering or really, really appalling in it. And then I will upload it and then two and a half hours later you will see it. But in theory the recording is happening first, so I'll see it from the recording. Yeah, that's it. Anyway, how's your morning? Halloween is gone until next year. The high holy month of October, where all food shall be Halloween food, has passed. Um, making my coffee. Gotta open the blinds. We put out a sign that said, no contact, trick-or-treating, take a candy. And put some candy on the porch. And... Had more trick-or-treaters this year than last year. Um, last year we had six groups. The first year... Yeah, I think we had six groups. Anyway, this year we had eight or ten groups of three to four kids each. It was very obvious that parents were going around looking for people who had designated that they were trick-or-treating for the kids. The neighbors across the way did trick-or-treating, and they had no contact trick-or-treating as well. Do I think trick-or-treating is a valid risk? If I had to hand out and talk to every one of the kids, no. No. Kids are vectors. But do I think that not letting kids trick-or-treat is, is wrong and, and too hard on the kids? No, I don't think that either. I think kids are very adaptable, and if you tell them this is what we're doing this year, they're fine. I get fed up with the whole, oh, don't take hand-baked goods, it might be poisoned. Oh, don't take an apple, there might be a razor blade in it. It's the same as the whole, there's going to be marijuana edibles in the kids', kids bags, be careful. The incident rates of those things happening are so small, it's not even funny. I worked in ER two Octobers in a row x-raying candy for kids in the 80s because parents were par paranoid. Well, I did the paperwork and the x-ray tech did it. Because parents were paranoid about somebody's going to put a razor blade in something or a needle in something, a broken off needle in a candy bar. In Los Angeles. We must have done 30,000 bags. They just x-rayed groups of bags and then looked for anything metal. Nothing was found. It was a giant, huge waste of expense parents throw out a huge amount of candy every year because the package might be opened. Well, it came out of the bag from the store might be opened because we have crappy packaging. You know, half of your Snickers bars, the caramel got on the seam and the seam didn't take. You know this. It makes me grumpy. If you live in a small town where everybody knows everybody, or a medium town where everybody mostly knows everybody, or at least this circle knows everybody and its circle, and that circle knows everybody and that circle. And if you're taking candy from houses, houses are homeowners or renters, but still, they're trackable. You get 15 kids with Poison Three Musketeers, you're going to know where they came from, you know? And if you're in a town that's moderately sized and you can't trust your neighbors, that's wrong. And the reality is you can trust your neighbors but the media has presented it in such a way that everybody's paranoid about getting something in their candy so they can't take cookies from the woman up the road. Now, on that note, I'm not a big fan of taking cookies from the woman up the road because she might have a cat that sits on the counter and licks the beaters. That's my problem. Anyway, my problem is the falsely generated fears 
and how people are taking them as facts. That's my problem. And yeah, we're coming up on the election and that plays a huge deal. I have a water spout. Remember when you were a little kid and your mom would put your hair in a water spout? God, I hated those. I have a water spout. I'm a whale. There we go. See, I'm a whale. There. <laughs> God's just stupid. Almost as stupid as when I let it flop down. You know those chickens that have the feathers that come up and frizzle down? That's what I look like right now. See? Because my hair sticks out. It doesn't fall. It doesn't drape. Because it's not white people hair. And people don't get that. Okay? This hair will not drape down. That one spot drapes down because it's got a scar that makes it drape down and because I cut it below the line. Okay, so there's a line where the hair goes down and a line where the hair goes up. Okay. This is my hair after being washed. Why does it look so greasy? Oh. Because of cultural perceptions of what greasy hair looks like. Because my hair is really not greasy. It's just my hair. Right? Right? Uh-huh. Anyway, my coffee's done. I did my rant. I'm not going to get much more into the election in fear. I'll talk to you tomorrow.